My guest tonight played the title role in the hugely successful Karate Kid films. Now, 36 years later, he's reprised the character of Daniel LaRusso on Netflix's Cobra Kai, one of the hottest shows in the country right now. I think everyone's watching this through uh, COVID. Please welcome Ralph Macho. Ralph, thanks for joining us. Hey, Conan, great to be here, thanks. Where, first of all, where are you? Are you on the East Coast? I am on the East Coast. I am on the East End of Long Island as we speak, or Long Island, shall Long I say? Long Island. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, I'm in an abandoned theater uh, <laughs> here in Los Angeles, and I look like a pervert. I look like a guy that, <laughs> that broke into a closed uh, sex house, basically. Right. And I apologize for that, but what are you going to do? These are strange no, I, I, expect, I expect nothing less. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Nicest thing anyone said to me in half an hour, Ralph. Uh, first of all, um, I want to congratulate you on Cobra Kai. Uh, I have watched, I think, almost all of them. I am loving the show. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It seems like the perfect show right now because um, it's this nice dose of nostalgia. It's really fun. And the show has a great sense of humor. It's, so I'm enjoying it. It's a, it's a great quarantine show. Yes. What, what's the response you're hearing from people? Well, we'll take we'll take the great quarantine. I'll take the great show, no matter what. But the uh, it is that I call it the comfort food. You know, it's it's that big fat nostalgic embrace, and yet it's telling uh, relevant stories for today and a great young yeah. cast, and uh, it's just hitting on all cylinders. And um, that's this sort of blessing. I mean, this has been, I call it the second rebirth of the rebirth of the original movie. You know, we. Right. Right. Came out a few years ago on YouTube Premium, and now Netflix. It's just blown out of the water all over the world, and it's yeah, it's a it's a great time for the show, and it's nice to be um, an alternative to the hell that we're we are living with every day. <laughs> and I'll tell you how you're affecting my life, which is one of the ways. You know, right now, in in addition to quarantine, we've also have uh, so much smoke in the air here in the West. Right. You, right. you can't go outside. I have a treadmill in the basement. It's in a tiny room and there is a small TV there and I will binge watch Cobra Kai and I'm on the treadmill. And what happens is when it builds up to a fight scene, <laughs> I crank the treadmill. So I'm running at like 60 miles an hour, bare chested. It's, okay. it's not a pretty sight. I'll oh, get like you a picture because you clearly want one, but I'm running full out as the kid is beating up the bullies in the cafeteria and I'm like, Awesome. And my family comes running downstairs because they think I've had a major heart attack. Heart attack, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And it's and the show is is uh, laced with this great '80s homage music. You yes. Know, that yes. era, that time, the training montages and all that stuff. It is. Right. It is uh, kick-ass in that way, and that's that's awesome. Well, I'm I'm glad to help out in your cardio and everything else. Yes, uh, it's uh, you know you mentioned '80s and nostalgia. I've got some pictures here. I'm sure your life oh. has been being confronted by these pictures. Yes, yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first of all, let's sue the guy who convinced you to do that pose. I know, I know. <laughs> there's so many, there's many others. That That is not the one. I'm actually glad that was the one you, well, let's see what's next. Oh, no, 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 I've got this one too. <laughs> oh, well, that's from a movie. That's from a movie. That's yes. teacher, the movie with Nick Nolte. Jared. I know, I know, I know. But uh, any kid who's wearing that hat to school needs to know karate. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, uh, you know, it's funny because all these pictures, I, I, you and I, I think are just about the same age. And there are, the saving grace for me is there are no photographs of me until I'm about 30. <laughs> I was unphotographed. I'm like someone that was born in the 1850s. There's no photograph <laughs> right. of me. And then they start around the time I'm 29 or 30. What's it like for your kids when they're on the internet and this pops up yeah. and they say, dad, what the thinking yeah what the f and, and uh, it gives them leverage great amounts of leverage yeah um it's uh you know i mean what are you what are you gonna do it's kind of fun because when my kids were uh my daughter was like four when she first saw the karate kid maybe five and um and so it was one of those things we were we were tour i was doing a, a a Broadway musical around the country uh, called How to Succeed. And I was playing the lead in this show. And every city we would go to these Planet Hollywoods, which were big deals back in the early 90s. And uh, we'd grab lunch there with the, with uh, 
my kids and my daughter would see this memorabilia up and ask these questions like, why are people standing on one leg and holding their arms up in the air when they see daddy? And what, what is that headband? Why are they wearing it? And then finally it was like, well, you know, it's time to sit you down, honey. Daddy's not like all the other daddies. Um, and then we, I showed her the film at four years old. Little, you showed her Karate Kid at four. Yeah, five, five years old. Five. I think it was five because we got back when she was five. And I showed her that and, and thinking that it would, I would make her proud and, and not, not thinking that I get my ass kicked in every other scene and she's watching her dad be beaten to a pulp yeah, constantly and running out of the room. So that was uh, uh, an epic parent fail by, by me. Yeah, you scarred your child for life. Yeah. yeah. Um, although I have to say my children at any point in their lives would love nothing more than to see footage right. of being beaten. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it might have changed to that when she got through middle school, but at five, she really, you know, I was a hero for a moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And my son, my son on the flip side found all those teen magazine kind of pictures when he was about the same age and ran into the family room to my daughter and said, look, dad was huge and we missed it. <laughs> So, so fortunately for me right now with Cobra Kai show, uh, dad may not be that huge, but they're not missing it. Well, so. uh, what, we, you, you guys have been like the number one show on- Yeah, we are huge. Let's say it. I'm it's huge. huge. I mean, let's huge. just say that. This let's is, uh, and, and I, you know, another thing I wanted to say about the show that I, I really love is there's a sense, there's a real funny sense of humor and self-awareness about the show. Mm. So I love, there are these scenes where Johnny Lawrence, you know, uh, the bully in the original Karate Kid, he's struggling and he doesn't understand that the 80s are over. And right. then he's touching right. scenes where he's like trying to hawk his, he's trying to sell his Atari console and people right. like, don't right. give a shit about <laughs> this anymore. Um, he's very good at, at, at tapping into, it's almost in a comical way, he doesn't understand that it hasn't been the 80s for a long time. He missed, right. someone didn't tell him that things have changed. Yeah, it's refreshing to have a character like that who is not politically correct in any way, shape or form and represents right. a lot of what a lot of many people think but can't or won't say. So right. I think there's a release with that because we're so overprotective of everything. Yes, um, yeah. The anti-hero um, and you know, you root for that redemption. That's the cool thing about the show is it really, your allegiance to each character can change episode to episode. Right. Because it dives more into the gray areas of who these yeah. guys are and even the young characters as opposed to the black and white of what Karate Kid was, good old evil, you know? Right. Well, what's happened interestingly enough is that initially Karate Kid, and I remembered seeing it in the theater when it came out, uh, was about you know, you are clearly the protagonist, you're the underdog, you're the hero, and then it's clear who uh, the bully is, Johnny Lawrence. What happened over time, and it's kind of a tribute to the film, is that people got into these, these discussion groups and it sort of became part of a, a, almost a cultural question of who's yeah. the real bully? Right. Because he has the cruel sensei and you have the nice sensei, you take his girlfriend, what, you know, and, and it, it, it became, um, those are the intellectual discussions of our time, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You've laid it out, you've laid it out beautifully. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it has become pop culture. I mean, it's really become that. There are fan videos, theories, the crane kick was illegal. Um, you know, you say he took his girlfriend. Well, you know, she was, uh, I, I mean, we could go on and on about that. I defend, uh, I defend LaRusso, but it's fun. It's fun to people care. I mean, yeah. they've cared for 35, 36 years. Sure. And now it's, um, it's lifted to another level. Um, but know. Ralph, Ralph, right. be honest. Yeah. There are times when you wake up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. covered in sweat, screaming, the crane kick was legal. It's it totally was legal. Oh, more, more often than you know. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess on the Conan O'Brien show. Do you ever that, do that? Do you ever, uh, you're getting a latte and someone's just giving you a look? A little, a little, like, it was legal. It was it legal. Was legal. <laughs> I, I'm going to do that some more. I'm doing that. He I'm doing that. All week it was now. Legal. I love it. Well, every, every day this week, I'm doing that. You know, it's so funny because uh, during, I've not had a haircut, as you can tell, or as mm. many people can tell, 
during, uh, during the pandemic. And so for the first time in years, my hair has been getting in my eyes. So a couple of months ago, I started wearing, uh, not on the air, but just around uh, when we're doing the shows and we're taping them, my assistant, who's always socially distant, but I'll be talking to her and I'll be wearing this thing to keep the hair out of my eyes. And one day she was like, you look like somebody, you remind me of somebody. And I'm like, who? And then she said, you look like Johnny Lawrence. And Johnny I realized Lawrence. because I'm usually scowling at her. Right, so you have the badass kind I've, of- I've got the badass, I mean, I'm not as you know good looking Perfect. as this guy, but I had that kind of, you know, sort of blondish guy with my hair up and I'd be telling her things like, you can't handle it, Sona. Come on, <laughs> get me my coffee. And she'd say, oh my God, you're- you couldn't be well enough alone. <laughs> That's what you should have to say when you vote. I often dress up in a skeleton costume. Yeah, and I can only- Haunt her <laughs> at, at night. You know, one question I have is that uh, you seem to be in really good shape. You seem like you've taken care of yourself, but and I'm speaking as someone who I believe is roughly the same age, you know, you've got to do some stunts now. And I, and it probably started out with you just the occasional, I have to kick coffee, an iced coffee or a boba tea right. in someone's hands. Oh. Yeah, but um, okay, there's that, but then they just keep ratcheting it up. How are you handling that? Because you're not a 17, 18 year old kid anymore. Mm, it hurts. It all, it's all a lot of stretching. I mean, you know, even when the show was pitched to me, you know, it was, in my view, I'm saying to myself, well, I'll throw a kick, a punch, I'll, you know, demonstrate, but the kids will carry all the weight, you know. And then once I got in and we did season one and then season two and then subsequently season three, which is coming out in 2021, every year there's more and more yeah, none of us are getting younger. It takes uh, it takes a lot more work, and it takes uh, it hurts. That's yeah. it. It just hurts, and the stretching is big. And the next day, you're walking kind of silly. Yeah, I would um, if I had to just do just even the kick that you do the first time your your character uh, kicks uh, has to do a big kick, and it's right. just in that car dealership where you have to knock a you know a, a boba tea out of someone's hand. If I did that, my groin would have fallen off. Yes. It would have literally detached from my body. And then we would have spent maybe six months sewing it back in. Yeah, you know? it's, it's tough to do. I mean, it, you know, Billy works hard at it. He's, uh, you know, he's, I've always, he's always been more of an athlete than I, I was even from day one. But we all, uh, we all have our war stories. You know, it's, uh, we get through it, man. Right. We get through Good. it. Well, I owe you a, a huge debt of thanks because as you know, about a year or so ago, uh, and to back it up a little bit, all of my fans know that I've had a long running feud with a guy on our staff yes. named Jordan Schlansky. Yep. Jordan Schlansky is a total pain in the ass um, and uh, is a big know-it-all. And then you did me this amazing favor. I took Jordan to, uh, to Japan Mm -hmm. And he, Jordan says that he knows everything about Japan. Also, his, one of his favorite movies of all time is Karate Kid and then uh, Karate Kid 2, the whole franchise. And he started to shoot off his mouth as I knew he would about how he knows that Karate Kid 2 was shot in Okinawa, I think. And I secretly asked you, would you tape a, uh, would you tape a message of you straightening Jordan out. And you did that. Your entire fascination <laughs> with Japan mm -hmm. stems from the fact that you saw Karate Kid 2. Yeah. And that it was filmed in where? Okinawa. Okinawa. I have a message here for you. Please press play. And uh, hold that out to the camera as you watch it. Hi, Conan. It's me, Ralph Macchio. Listen, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to tell that Jordan guy that all the scenes in Karate Kid Part 2 that were supposed to be Japan were actually shot in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, and Jordan, those weren't real dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I cannot tell you what that meant to me. That was so sweet. 
he's still recovering. <laughs> you appeared out of thin air. His childhood hero appeared out of thin air and said, Jordan, I side with Conan. You're wrong. It was, it was perfect. I, you know, it's funny because you get asked to do, or I've gotten asked to do, you know, these sketch things. You get the yeah. you get pitches. Hey, would you do this for whoever, whoever? And it's usually a one-off joke that, right. that the show gets a lot more mileage out of than I do. Yep. This one came to me at like the, the perfect time with, the, with a couple of suggestions, each one better than the next. I said, you know what? I was in my office. I said, okay, let me just throw this up on the phone sure. and see if it works. And it just... It killed, man. It killed. It was I, it's really we, had, fun. We, were, we were playing it on the set of Cobra Kai when we were shooting it, and everybody was um, um, going, I could get to Machio. I could get to Machio, because that was sort of the... Yes, because the, Jordan... The, -E the pronunciation of my name. Yes, Jordan was so Machio. mad. He was so mad at me in that moment. He couldn't just take the joke and go, okay, pretty good, you got me. He he just kept saying, oh, you think you're so big because you, you yeah. get, you're the star of the show. Well, I could get to Machio. I could get to you. So it's right. Machio. Machio. It was great. It's your great. hero. How do you and not my, know it's Machio? And my single favorite line of that, that, of that year probably was, your childhood hero came out of my phone and took a shit in your mouth. Because <laughs> you delivered it beautifully. I laugh out loud every time. And subsequently now... And maybe it's because of the Conan O'Brien show. And we'll give uh, some props to Jordan, even though I know you hate to do it. But <laughs> I have been to Okinawa uh -huh. for some shooting of uh, Cobra Kai season three, ah. which I cannot talk too much about, but I could okay. say it dives into the origin of Miyagi-Do Karate. Oh, wow. Okay. Learn a little bit. Uh, some secrets of uh, past history that is new to the audience and to LaRusso. Yeah. my character, and we actually went to Okinawa to shoot. So I think you guys put that in the ether and uh, somehow. So yeah, retroactively, you've proven Jordan right. Yes, I have, but, but not after <laughs> killing him and squashing him and shitting in his mouth. All right, we have a clip here uh, from, from Cobra Kai, and uh, I believe this is where basically you are finding out that your old nemesis, Johnny Lawrence, has set up the Cobra Kai uh, dojo. Dojo in the mini mall. You realize that this he's brought it back. Mm -hmm. You can't believe it, and you go in, and there's kind of a quasi confrontation here, which is kind of yeah. cool. I think that sets it up. Let's take a look at this clip from Cobra Kai. Is there anything else you need me to do? Oh. I'm sorry, Sensei. I... Sensei, really? Oh my God, kid, I don't know what he's told you, but you shouldn't believe a word this guy says or you're gonna end up exactly like him. You and I, this, we aren't done. I'm right here, man. You know what? I'm really happy for you. This is, uh, I'm really happy for your success. And uh, I'm happy that, um, and again, thank you so much for destroying Jordan Schlansky for me. That's right. I owe you, anytime you need any video from me, if you can ever find someone who's a big fan of mine, I'll do this. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll start looking. Start I looking. Start, it won't be that difficult. <laughs> it won't be that difficult. I love, um, I love I'll start looking. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, you set me up. You threw me a beat up there. <laughs> <laughs> that over the middle of the plate, I had a swing. Um, th thank that was, you. Uh, that was an illegal kick that yes, you gave to me. Uh, the first two seasons of Cobra Kai are streaming now on Netflix, and uh, it is a really fun show. If you're not watching it, get started, because it's a joy. And uh, Ralph, thank you so much. Really good thank talking you. to you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you yeah, so much. Stay safe. Take care, man.